Okay, so before we get into the video, quick reminder, this Saturday, September 18th, we're going to be having a 12-hour stream, celebratory stream for meeting a thousand subscribers here on YouTube. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, something that we're going to be doing, though, um, we're, I'm actually going to be giving away five of these planes on EU and five of these planes on NA during the stream. Um, so if you don't have a plane, um, you, know, you can you can put into um, try to receive this plane. Um, you know, I really appreciate everything that everybody's done for me. So putting some of my own money down, and yeah, it's not the world's best plane, but it's a hell of a lot of a fun plane. And um, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely looking forward to seeing if we can get as many of these on a battle as possible. So join me this Saturday, starting 2 p.m. Eastern time. That is 8 p.m. Central European time. And otherwise, let's hop right into the battle. Hey there, Postal here. Hope you're all doing okay. Today we are taking out the AD-10C2. This is a tier five French, technically, um, fighter. It's a weird looking fighter though, isn't it? Uh, I absolutely love this plane. I really, honestly, truly love this plane. Is it a good plane? No, no, not really. Um, is it a bad plane? No, not really. Uh, it has a gunner, a rear gunner, obviously. Pretty good field of fire. Um, as you would hope, if you were this dude in the back, uh, yeah, you're protected by your mustache and that's about it. And your ability to shoot the guy shooting at you. I would not want to be that guy. Uh, this almost looks like a biplane, right? And it does have a good amount of maneuverability. It is not zero maneuverability, like, well, like the zero. Um, it's pretty close to on par with Spitfires and things of that nature. The guns aren't overly great hitting. Uh, you know, getting this rear gunner, I assume Wargaming kind of balanced it out, you know, balanced with quotes around it. Um, and saying, well, they've got a rear gunner, so the rest of the airplane shouldn't be overly too greatly awesome. And, yeah, it's kind of how it plays. You do have a 20 millimeter cannon here. I actually want to get, I want to get these planes that have less hit points because my plane here puts out less volume. And so let's go ahead and handle what we can handle. Get the 20 millimeter cannon on target. Let's go ahead and get some boost on. Go. Let's see my um, mediocre at best damage output here. There we go. Let's move along. Next. Come on. There we go. Set him on fire. Excelente. Oh, it's a Japanese plane. Of course he's on fire. Alright, we've got we've got a cluster of freaking planes at the center. I'm actually gonna kinda go around this mountain, over this mountain, through the mountain. Um, on the enemy team, we've got a BF-109B and a LAG-34. Both of those we should be able to handle relatively easily. Well, the BF-109B definitely has just excellent guns, excellent fire output. Uh, the LAG-3, less so, but still going to be a difficult plane to go against. Really, uh, you don't want anything to get behind you. You've got a rear gunner on this plane, but he's basically useless besides his style and mustache. Oh my goodness. My goodness. Well, he's firing at somebody. Did you see all that damage he did? Neither do I. But he looked good doing it. I sat way too long in front of this particular plane. And I'm lucky to be alive. I really should have turned sooner. Um, I thought I was going to kill the, kill the enemy sooner. But it didn't work out. Uh, we need to send everybody over here. I hate three sector maps, but it is what it is. You you deal with uh, you know you handle the cards you were dealt basically. So we're gonna see what we can do. I need to watch out for this guy right here actually. The ground attackers, like yeah, I want to kill them, but they're not gonna kill me. Well, hopefully. <laughs> um, so I need to keep an eye out on the map right now. There's some heavy fighters inbound. 
Do not crash into said plane that I said I don't need to worry about. Is this BF-10? Yep. My rear gunner's doing some rear gunner stuff. Here we go. Get my boost on. This plane really is just much better at taking out fighters than it is any other... Uh, and multi-rolls. But, like, heavy fighters, ground attackers, it just takes way too long to actually hurt anybody. And so it's not the best at taking out those kind of planes. So you really do want to focus on getting multi-rolls and getting fighters knocked out. Something else that I've also got set up on my, my uh, plane, as you can see, I've got the ability just to fire the 30 caliber machine guns. They're not 30 caliber, but they're basically 30 caliber. Um... And I can fire my 20 millimeter cannon at the same time, you know, as well, obviously. But that way I can let my 20 millimeter cannon cool off. Oop, this guy's gonna want to kill me, isn't he? Uh, I can let my 20 millimeter, my actual damage dealer, cool off while still doing a little bit of damage with my 30 cal machine guns. And, you know, through that process, be more effective. Well, we're hanging on to the center. I was just going to hang out in the center here to, you know, be a pain in the ass for a little while. Um, I wasn't expecting to actually hold on to it, all things considered. They've got a military base shooting at us, so it's eventually going to flip it, you would think. But if I keep killing the planes that keep coming here, I suppose... Oh, no. You know what, multi-roll? I freaking ignored you for two seconds, and this is what I get, huh? He's on fire. Will I kill him from the fire? I guess so. Cool. Uh, BF-109. Our wing's knocked out, but I think we'll be okay. Excelente. Rear gunner's shooting somebody, so that's got to that's gotta mean somebody's behind me, right? Um, let's go ahead and keep turning. Oop. Excellent. Um, and in the meantime, while we're miraculously holding on to this, I mean, we're, we're, we're pretty kind of lucky to be alive, honestly, um, between the two different multi-rolls that were attacking us, both of them, um, one I, I maneuvered, outmaneuvered quickly enough to not die, one of them peeled off us for whatever reason, but either way, we survived two different engagements that we probably shouldn't have, uh, boost, boost, is this guy coming towards me? He is coming towards me. Couldn't really tell at first. Um, we are actually winning this just simply by defending this sector. This is not necessarily the tact I would recommend. Um, it's working for us right now. My tact was, my, my, my strategy was, we'll defend it till they cap it, and then I'll go get their, their military base. But in the meantime, we've gone ahead and, and done such a good job of defending the center that um, we've actually <laughs> completely won this game. That's really hilarious, to be honest. Got ourselves a Guardian, of course, because all we've done is kill everything that comes into this sector. Now, we've been really, really lucky um, to not have to deal with a Zero, um, or a Spitfire could be a pain in the butt, a Yak-1 could be a, could definitely be an issue. The Zeros and Yaks tend to be the biggest issue with this plane. Um, going against Spitfires, less so because you're kind of on par with a Spitfire. Um, but, you know, we did what we needed to do. And uh, we, you know, you don't... You can complain about bad matchmaking, but you shouldn't bitch about good matchmaking is basically what it comes down to. So I'm not going to bitch. Let's head on back. All right, so we were able to get 14 kills there. The vast majority of them is defense, right? Um, and even when we didn't kill them on defense, it was near, you know, near the sector to that I was focusing on. Uh, th yeah, so th again, I'm not gonna say this was this is a standard game for the 8010C2. Um, the reason I'm showing this off is because we've got that um, awesome 12-hour um, stream that's gonna be happening this Saturday, September 18th, and I'm gonna be giving away five of these on the EU server and five of these on the NA server. Um, and I kinda wanted to show it off a little bit. Uh, you know, for that that 12-hour stream, the celebratory stream, is because you know I've got a thousand subscribers now on YouTube, which I know is not a ridiculous amount, but it's a threshold that I set, a goal that I set for myself, and you know I want to celebrate that. I want to say thank you to all of you. So I want to show off the plane that I'm going to be giving away. Um, 
so yeah, this is that plane, right? And you it, like any matchup, you need to take advantage of the matchup. Sometimes you get the short end of the stick. Sometimes you get the big stick. Uh, this time we got a big French stick. Uh, baguette, maybe. So we need to take advantage of that, and we were able to. I've kept this plane French, but keep in mind it's European. So you can change this plane to be any nation. You want it to be American, Japanese, British, German, Soviet. Congratulations, Postal. You know how to name off the nations of World of War planes. But you can change that if you have this plane as a European plane. I haven't changed mine because um, when I first was gifted this plane, actually, I think I got it in a um, uh, crate, maybe. I might have actually bought this myself when it was on sale for 50% off. Tier 5 premiums being 50% off, they're, you know, they're like 5 bucks. And, um, you know, why not kind of situation. I, at the time it was French, it could only be French. By the time they opened up the European tech tree and allowed all the European planes to be any nation you want them to be, um, I had already been playing this for so long as a French plane that I just kept it as French. And to be honest, I mean, look at it. Does it look like it could be any other nation's plane? Does it, does it look? No. It looks pretty damn French to me. Uh, and so I've kept it French. Let's take a quick overview of this plane. If you already happen to have it, maybe we'll get some tips on um, you know, some, some other things you can do with the plane. Maybe you've got some other things that you do with it. Not a lot of people actually like this plane. I absolutely love it. Um, I love it because it's unique. Um, I love it because it's completely different than, than other planes at this tier. I don't love it because it's you know overpowered. It's not my I hop in this plane to win the game. I hop in this plane to have fun. God forbid, right? Um, so let's take a quick look here at first at the the upgrades themselves. You have two. We're just they're seven and a half millimeter machine guns. We're just going to call them thirty cal machine guns. They're actually a little bit smaller than thirty caliber, but that's basically what you've got on the rear gunner here. Sixty four damage per second. Wow. Um, your two forward firing uh, 30 cal machine guns actually do less damage than your rear gunner. That should tell you something because the rear gunner wasn't really doing much of anything. Very, very short range. Only do 30 damage per second each, so 60 damage per second total. Your 20 millimeter cannon is the one that's doing all the damage. It's the one that's got the good firing range. Um, yeah, so this is 90 damage per second. It's the one that also overheats relatively quickly. And so you need to keep in mind uh, the, the only way that you're going to have any success in this plane is by being mindful of your 20 millimeter cannon and making sure that it's not overheating. If your 20 millimeter cannon is overheating, and keep in mind it's hub mount, it's directly center, so you, you're going to get the best accuracy you can get. If this cannon is overheating, this plane is really, really frustrating. And so I did show that little trick. Um, you know, I've got a, a um, a key that I hit that only fires these two mach uh, machine guns, my 30 cals in this instance. And then, uh, you know, I fire my normal trigger to fire all three of them. But that way I can fire just these two machine guns, let the hub mounted cannon cool off. You can watch the cool down tick uh, on the left hand side next to the gun. And then once it's cooled down enough, then I start firing all the guns again. That way you're still getting some damage. It's mediocre, but some damage with your, your measly machine guns while you're waiting for your cannon to cool off. And then once your cannon is cooled off, you can put out your full volume of fire. As you can see, the, the plane is not that fast. Not that there's a bunch of fast planes at Tier 5, but this is definitely on the slow end of the spectrum. The maneuverability is pretty strong. Um, again, we didn't have to deal with anything too crazy in this situation, but typically I can... I can um, you know, duel with Spitfires and, and feel pretty comfortable. Anything that's more maneuverable than a Spitfire, like a A6M5, or I'm sorry, an A6M2, or a um, Yak-1, those typically outmaneuver me without any kind of uh, a Key 43. They're going to outmaneuver me without really thinking about it. Actually, I guess we can compare to the Spitfire here. So yeah, my Spitfire 1 isn't specialized. It's got slightly worse maneuverability, so I would think once it's specialized, it's going to have a decent amount of more maneuverability. But still, I'm just going from my experience. I can tend to run into Spitfire players and outmaneuver them. My skill set might be different, but uh, say la vie. A6M2 and a Key 43 can just outmaneuver me all day. Same with the Yak-1. Do I even have a Yak-1 to show? Yes, I do. Sure. 
these are all going to be more maneuverable. Yep. Um, and so that you're right there in the middle where the Spitfire is. So you can you can outmaneuver things like the P40. You're going to be able to outmaneuver things like the BF109E. Um, just keep in mind that a lot of people play the BF109E, and so they could have it spec'd out for turnability. I don't have mine spec'd out at all. Um, but even if they've got it spec'd out for turnability, your plane should be able to outmaneuver them. Speaking of spec'd out, let's take a quick look at how I've got my plane set up. Now, unfortunately, it's the airframe that has the two um, equipment slots, which makes sense. I mean, look at the, the airframe is everything about this plane. It's not the engine. It's not the guns. It's the airframe. And so the two slots kind of hamper my your choices here. For the equipment on the cockpit, you only have two options at tier five. So you're just going to go with the sight. You don't need cockpit armor. That's a joke. Um, and your engine here, I've got advanced operate, uh, upgraded engine. I do want to try to just get some more boost, some more ability to, to get a little bit of speed. Conceivably, I could go all in on maneuverability here and put lightweight power unit. Um, but with my particular setup and my particular skill set, a little bit more speed is actually the way to go for me. Uh, that being said, I don't remember what the setup was when it wasn't specialized. So if it's if specialization um, allows for an engine slot, I would probably not have the upgraded engine before specialization. What I mean by that is, you know, specialized, this is how I've got it set up. If it wasn't specialized and I still had the engine slot, I probably would at that point put the lightweight power unit just because you're if you're not specialized, you're never going to have any kind of speed and you might as well focus on full maneuverability. As far as the airframe is concerned, um, I've got the, the lightweight wing frame. I've put polished skin on here, which can be a pain in the butt because it takes away from maneuverability. Uh, but the other options just didn't make sense. The reinforced skin, okay, whatever. Like it doesn't really matter for this plane. Um, and, and I don't want to get more hit points. The hit points on a fighter to me is kind of kind of useless, at least in a fighter like this, an attorney fighter. So I've gone and put some, you know, more airspeed, and um, you know, it, it seems to still be doing okay. Why does it say here on the pop-up? It says negative two point eight percent yaw maneuverability. On the list here, it says negative one point eight. That's kind of weird. Then again, it also says uh, one more cruise speed percentage here on the mounted and then on the pop-up it has one less cruise speed percentage huh oh because the bonus characteristics i see i'm an idiot hope you guys see that so the bonus characteristics have plus one maneuver maneuverability and plus one cruise speed so that's why this overall is actually accurate all right cool postal's not an idiot yes he is um anyway polished skin is what i've got on here so my airspeed is is you know 8% higher than it normally would be. My new maneuverability is, you know, 5% higher than it normally would be. Um, and I've, I've found a good balance to this. It allows me to get from sector to sector. That's what I use the airspeed for typically is trying to get to higher altitude when I'm trying to get one plane or trying to get to another sector when I need to be capping or, or trying to defend. Uh, my consumables is my basic consumable build. It's a premium plane, so I can afford to have uh, universal ammo. It's pretty expensive though, because you've got universal ammo on the rear gunner as well. It's, uh, it's questionable at best, but I've got it and I'm doing a, that. Yeah, so I put first aid package on here because the plane doesn't catch on fire very often and you desperately need to have, you could get your gunner knocked out or your, your pilot knocked out. So using first aid kit is the way I go. Pneumatic control assist is what I might use if I get myself stuck into a battle that I can't out turn the plane. I might be able to save myself with pneumatic control assist. Or if I need to get my guns on target quickly, <clears throat> and I know I'll be okay, like I'm not stuck in the middle of a dogfight, uh, you know, in the middle of a, a bunch of planes, I'll use pneumatic control assist to get my guns on target and get the kill quicker. And then engine cooling so I can get from sector to sector quicker or get to higher altitude quicker. Hope that all makes sense, I'm rambling on. As far as my pilot skills are concerned, so this is what I had set up um, before before the rework, uh, but I've still stuck with it. Um, I've got the aerobatics expert, give me a little bit more maneuverability. Aerodynamics expert, which is something that you don't necessarily need early on with this pilot, but you would want once you specialize it. 
Aerodynamics Expert gives 40% buff to all maneuverability and speed equipment because you now have three equipment slots being used for uh, maneuverability and speed. It helps in those situations, so Aerodynamics Expert is certainly helpful. I've gone ahead and put Evasive Target in here, so it reduces damage received and chances of receiving critical damage um, and pilot injuries by 25% when actively maneuvering. Typically you're actively maneuvering quite a bit in this plane. Um, I think it only popped up once or maybe twice while I was playing today. I didn't really dogfight dogfight, but that comes in really handy when you're trying to um, like outturn somebody. Evasive target uh, can, has saved my life a couple times for sure. Oh, didn't look at the gunner. The most important item for the gunner, honestly, is going to be defensive fire. And, and hear me out. Defensive fire on this plane means that whatever's behind it is doing 30% less damage as long as my gunner is attacking it. So if my gunner is attacking the plane that's attacking you, that plane that's attacking you is doing 30% less damage. That can certainly help you out. Um, it'll either let you live long enough to where a friendly can help get that plane off of you, or you'll live long enough to be able to outturn the plane to just shot you. So defensive fire would be my first recommended um, item to go on on this particular gunner. After that, quick reflexes is certainly a good uh, choice. Being able to get your turret to actually aim quicker and get on target quicker. It's not putting out a lot of damage, um, so you want it to be able to, to be hitting that target sooner rather than later. Um, and then I've gone for armor just so that I can be shooting at him for longer. Next up, I'm definitely going to be doing ballistics expert so I can get some range of fire and just be doing some sort of damage at some sort of range. Again, the gunner is not the, the, the actual damage output is not the end all be all on this plane, but every little bit helps. Considering the rest of the metrics are balanced based on the fact that you have a rear gunner, you might as well take advantage of that rear gunner and uh, see what kind of damage output you can do. So again, I just wanted to give a, a brief overview of this plane, some gameplay of it, because you know I'm giving away 10 of these uh, this weekend. So five on EU, five on NA. Um, it could be more if there's some sort of you know crazy special discount going on this weekend, but there's not gonna be, so it doesn't, I was hoping, but there just isn't gonna be. Um, special thanks to my wife who actually, you know, basically uh, approved uh, these transactions, considering this is all coming from, from uh, my pocket. Uh, none of this is coming from Wargaming or anything like that. So, you know, I, I definitely need to say thank you to my wife. Uh, if it wasn't for her and us being able to budget this, uh, you know, I would just do this 12 hour stream, but not any kind of giveaway. So, definitely thank you uh, to Mia. And otherwise, um, yeah, I'd love to hear your guys' opinion of this plane. Do you happen to have it? Is it one of those planes that you have and you're like, yeah, I got it, and it's just going to be sitting there in my garage collecting dust? Is it something that you've flown and you like and you forgot about? Is it something you don't have? I'd love to hear about that too, because if you don't have it, um, come and join me on stream uh, this Saturday. Uh, the two different times we're going to be giving it away. So, yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.